Hello. In this video, we are going to write a simple web page that accesses an online JSON file. Um, this is to kind of help set the stage for managing data when you're developing a web page, and it gives us an opportunity to kind of reinforce our understanding of loops and to work with um, JSON files. And so the first thing we want to understand is what is a JSON file? Um, a lot of people know about this, but they don't know what it actually is. Um, JSON stands for, and it's right here, JavaScript Object Notation. So it's a lightweight format for storing and transporting data. So essentially it's a, f a way to format data that we can transport and store it, and which is really useful when we're building web pages. Um, JSON is often used when data is sent from a server to a web page. So essentially if you load a web page and you need to send some information along, you can do that. And, you know, this last point is kind of... You know, it's self-describing, easy to understand, and that's true once you understand it. So what I've done here is I've, I've set up a, a template page, um, which is this, JSON display example. Uh, but the first thing we have to do before we can actually do anything is we have to actually find some JSON data. And I'm a big fan of this site here. This is called JSON Placeholder. It has a whole bunch of just pre-built JSON files for you that you can access. And I'm going to use this fake JSON file. So it's just a, a random file created called comments. And you're not going to translate this right now. Just let's get rid of that. And so here are all of the JSON elements. And you might notice here that they have a square bracket at the top, which means it's an array. And each of these represents an element. So there's the first element. There's the second element. There's a third element. And inside each element, we have a couple fields. So you'll see each element here has one, two, three, four, five fields. And we can make a variety of, you know, we can add as many fields as we want. So to access this, I'm going to use something called jQuery. And what jQuery is, is it's a pre-built library that you can go and access to do some more complicated code that you don't have to actually write. We're not actually worried about how it does it. We're just worried that it actually does what we need right now. There are other ways to do this. Um, this is just one of a couple ways. So here's the code that I've kind of set up as my template. And let's just go through and kind of identify a couple things there. So the first thing you'll notice up here is this, this line, line six. What this is doing is we're actually importing the code, um, the jQuery JavaScript code. And this means we now have access to it and we can do some things. Um, and this is important. So again, the idea is I don't, know how it actually does it, I just know that I can use some functions to do specific things. So then I have my, you know, standard template and at the bottom here, at the bottom of my body I have my script tag, and I have this var static URL. And this is a string. And what this string is, is it's a reference to the web page where my JSON data is. So it's actually the, the URL for this web page here. Then I have this weird line right here. And what this is, is this is some notation um, that we can set up. And essentially, it's calling a function called getJSON. And the way we access jQuery is using a dollar sign. We pass it the static URL. And then we have this interesting notation where we pass it a function. And all that we need to know right now is this is the code for the function. That's the important part. Um, this is getting into the weeds a little bit, um, but you'll notice that this brace is the closing brace, and that's the opening brace for the function. So if I do console.log here, and I say inside the function, this is where um, is inside this function here. So if I just come back here and I run this, but before I do it, I'm going to pull up my console. Let's just clear this. And when I load it, I see inside the function. Because what it's done is it's come in here and it's run this console.log. So the way this works is this get JSON actually does all the work for us. It will go out and collect all of that notation and put it in a value called data. So this variable data holds it. So if I do console.log data, and I come back and I reload it, there's the data. I now have access to all of the data, and I can display it and look at it. So there's 0, 1, 
two. So these are your different elements. And then we can see inside each element, we have a body, an email, an ID, a name, and a post ID. Exactly the same as the, these ones here. So I've now written a really simple program that has gone out and grabbed all of that data. And that's how we kind of read some JSON data into our program that we can now play with and manipulate. So let's imagine that I want to print out every, and what do we want to print out? Maybe print out every email? Let's do that. So I want to print out every email. So again, I have this array or list, even though they're different in array and list, I'll use them interchangeably for now. Um, I have this array of, of, of data. And so what I can do is I can write a loop. So I can say for i equals zero, i is less than data dot length, because that's going to be every element, i is equal to i plus one. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.log data at zero, or sorry, data at i. So the way this works now is I have a loop that will go through every element in the array data and print it out. So let's comment this out here. Let's save this. And let's go and reload our page and see what happens. And there it is. So it's printing them all out. So that's each of those 500 elements. Let's see there. Now what I want is all I want is I said I wanted their email. So the way that JSON notation works is that I use a dot notation to access any of the specific fields inside each element. So if I come back here, and I'm going to say data dot email, and let's save that. And let's take a look what happens. So I reload my page, and there are all those emails. And that's all there is to it. We are now kind of in a situation where we have grabbed all this JSON data and now we can do all sorts of fun things with it. You know, we could do an analysis and look at, you know, count the number of strings that end with, or count the number of emails that have a .tv at the end of it. Uh, we could, you know, look if there's any duplicate emails in this set. You know, really, your imagination is the only limiting factor in terms of what you can do with this stuff. So what I encourage you to do now is take this really basic kind of idea that I've shown you and play around with it. See if you can print out other things. See if you can print out multiple things. See if you can put an if statement inside of there. I hope this video helped. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful day.